we don't know what this period is going to mean, right, for artists, for, for anybody, whether it's going to be an enclosed, dissociated, or, um, or it's going to provide compost for very fertile times for people. I was here on the 18th of March. Um, and then I wasn't here for seven weeks. Why did you feel you didn't want to come to the studio? I was frightened. Yeah. I couldn't work, I couldn't focus, I came here and I kept thinking of people dying and the emergency services and I had absolutely no, I was completely distracted. You know, whilst I've been at home, and I've basically been doing the paintings that I can do. There are too many restrictions. There's paint everywhere and I can't move. And then the phone rings. I mean, what, what you've probably noticed here is it's not domestic. <laughs> you know, it's not comfortable. I come here and I work and I go. What, what's the word work mean? I'm interested in... Exploration, focus. The exploration of the qualities of paint, the exploration of shapes, the exploration... No, the ex exploration of paint, certainly, but the exploration of ideas. I mean, what's very good is to have the discipline of actually going to work, even if, even if it's awful. And then you come away and you think about it and then you go back. When you're at home, you actually might have done something interesting, but you end up destroying it because you go away and then you fiddle, you know? I need to, have, I need to make a gesture. I mean, obviously, I have dedicated spaces for different kinds of work in, in, for myself. I have a consulting room, and I have an office when I, where I write. But during COVID, I've been writing at a, a kitchen table by hand. It wasn't thought out. It was entirely spontaneous. And I was struck by it. I was writing about the body, so I, I think I wanted something physical, tactile, corporeal. I couldn't have done that at home. I, mean, yeah, I couldn't. You know, I need, I need, I need, need the, the physical. physical yeah. yeah, the physicality. It's not me, you know, doing like 18 inches or not. It's really not me. Um, I think, I know I did this at home. I think this is about as, as good as it gets. What I'm really struck with coming into the studio is what you're talking about, is this m intense physicality. I love the sense of abandon at the same time as the constraint of the frame. To have that sort of knowledge of the medium and, and to surrender it to it at the same time as having an idea of what you're doing and where it's going. I, I find that all of that mishmash, really interesting. I feel very at home with paint. I just do. I mean, wherever I go at home, there's paint everywhere. There's paint on the taps, there's paint in the kitchen, there's paint by the side of the bath. There's always paint. So paint is your language. It's what you inhabit. Yes, it is. That's why, that's another reason why I'm not great at talking. It's not, it's not, it's not well, you my are, You know what? Could you give that one up? Because you're pretty good at talking. I just love the fact that you're experimenting, you're alive, you know, just like a writer tries new forms and doesn't write the same bloody book all the time. Well, that's, for me, that's what it's about. It's about experiment. Well, exactly, so that goes back to process and what you're exploring, and you don't know what you're exploring until you're doing it, and then you do know, and then you don't know. I know, Susie, you prefer my head paintings. No. <laughs> Do you not? I know it was your head paintings that brought your work to my attention. It speaks to the subject of my work, which is people in, in pain, people in agony. I'm not in agony. No, I mean, I'd rather, have, I'd rather look at your pinks, especially that one. I think it's, again, it's like intriguing me that it's got joy, but also quite a bit of sorrow in it. You know how I feel about the faces. They're haunting, scary, anguishing. 
I can't look away from them. I can't stand to look at them. They, they drive me nuts. It's very interesting for me to look at the, ah, look at that picture for God's sake. All scribbled out, you're so cross. You are so cross there. <laughs> that was lying near the easel with the big black one. And you said, what is it? I said, I don't know. It's too wet to look at. Yeah, but that's like an angry little girl, isn't it? Mm. Full of hope too, with the little flicked up hair. <laughs> we have to keep moving around. It's very, yeah. very funny. It's quite Freudian, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know because classical Freudians don't really have bodies in the room, if you think about it. You have the, the, pay, the analyson on the couch lying down with the analyst behind. It's not how I work because I'm too interested in bodies. That could be a metaphor for how people are really and how you move about with somebody emotionally. I mean, now we're doing it both physically as well. It's so constraining and it's, and I hope we're not, I hope we're not in this so long that we have to develop really different forms that get, you know, that this gets ossified, the, I don't know. Can I see what you look like? Can you huh. see me? Again? No. Oh. No, because you had a mask on the whole time. Hello, Sarah, I, hi. <laughs> I love your work, That's, it makes so much difference. Oh, it's been so great doing it. It's Have you enjoyed really it? Fun. Yeah, I love it. It's really fantastic. Even in the portrait you did of Susie, does Susie know that? No! She'll be upset. Shall we a picture of me? Yeah. You'll be very upset. Okay, I'm not looking at it. No, it's not really a, it's not a literal, it's not a likeness of you. Okay, hey, it's rather nice. I like the golden. I mean, I think I've got... Do you recognise yourself? No. I've got... I, I don't recognise entirely the black, except the black is about the pain that I absorb doing the work that I do, which is there for a reason, because obviously it's got something to do with me. Um, but I like the intensity of the blue going across, which I presume is me looking and seeing. Very lively. Is it... Well, Susan's very lively. Yeah. I mean, for somebody who spells, spends their day being very still, I'm yeah. actually very lively. <laughs> I'm very, very drawn to this picture at the moment. I don't know why. That was on March the 17th. I, was do I did those three together. I was lucky with that. Yeah. I mean, the balance on that one is really... Um, it's very aesthetically pleasing to me. That means it's no good. I just remember Paula Rago, who liked my work, and she once said to me that a good piece of what work is seldom attractive. And that always stayed with me. I tend to go along with her. If it's, if it's very beautiful, there's no reason to keep looking at it. Oh, it's I don't think that's true at all. Would you say that in music? Would you say that in poetry? In writing? Would you say that in dance? Would you say that in... I mean, there's, there's so many fields of expression. I've got to disagree with you. Because if, if something is attractive, it's easy. I'm not interested. If something's got an edge, I want to look again. I want to discover. I want to explore. That's all. That's fair enough. But an edge doesn't necessarily preclude an aesthetic. No, but I think things are more meaningful if you... I think you're more likely to return to something if you don't quite you understand You mean in it. your work? I mean, if something's laid out in front of you and it's attractive, although I might acknowledge that it's very beautiful, I'm less inclined to look at it. It's, it's, it's not going to interest me as much as something that is a bit odd, a bit weird. I would say that. <laughs> Could I show you something? Please. Okay, I'm coming through. Out of interest, this is an attractive painting. This is an attractive painting. 
It, yes and no. It's not, it's not the most interesting thing in the studio to me. Exactly. That's my point. Can you say what you feel? Yes, I can. But it's, it's very different. When I look at the heads, I find them emotionally upsetting. I do. I really do. I mean, when you, when you saw the first lot of heads a year ago, over a year ago, and they were all set out, you know, it was, we sat for about an hour and a half, and I felt very bad afterwards, because I'd made them, and at some point I'd stopped making them when there was something on the paper that was close to me. So that I have a very emotional response to the heads, but I don't have an emotional response to the abstract work, because that's purely about the paint. It's obviously a physical process, so there's a person involved, so therefore it's not completely abstract. But these are completely non-referential. You can't see heads, you can't see landscape. And that, for me, is quite successful. I just notice flaws and how things could be a bit better and the colours not being right. It's far, it's, it's far harder for me to paint an abstract painting because it's more mysterious. It's so wh why do you think you're drawn to it? Because it's difficult. Right. Difficult is what I know.